Okay. Now let us look at minutes. We obtain max ifs, now minutes. All right. Here we are not doing uh, any uh, hard coding in the formula. If you see, everything is ranges and the values are also being passed from the cell, which means if I change the year or if I change the state, accordingly the max value will change. Now, suppose I change this to Florida. You see, the value has changed. Suppose I just change this to 2012. Again, the value changes. So based on the year that we mentioned and based on the state that we give, in that year, for that state, it is going to bring the maximum value from that range of values. In our case, we want the maximum sales. On similar lines, let us switch the minimum sales. For the criteria that is specified here, I need to figure out what is the minimum sales. So I'll do that now. It is exactly the same as maximum sales. We used max because we wanted to get the highest value. Now I'm talking about getting the lowest value. So I will use min IFS. Instead of max, I'm using min. The range where I'm supposed to look for the minimum value, I want the minimum value from the sales column. Okay, control shift down. Comma, what is the criteria range? The first criteria is year. So over here is my criteria range, comma. What is the value that I'm looking for in that year column for 2012? Whatever is given in the H3 cell, comma. The next range of values I need to check is here. I need to look for the state in this column. And what is the state that I'm trying to look for? Florida. Okay, so just like we did min max f, we are doing min f s. Min FS. So it is so and so. So 2012 Florida minimum is this. Suppose I change this to 2013. So Florida 2013. Look at the max and min now. The max is 6107 and the min is 2588. Okay. So max and min. Now let us do some ifs. Okay. I need the sum of sales. Okay, I need the sum of sales of that state from that year. Getting okay. summation of the data in the sales column. I need to add up the values in the sales column for the state that is mentioned in I3 cell and for the year that is mentioned in H3 cell. So the formula again remains the same here. I will use some IFS because I'm talking about summing up the data that is present over there. Then I'll open the bracket. We have to sum up the data in the sales column, comma. Okay, we would like to sum up the data in the sales column. And that is for a particular year. So it has to look for the year in this column. Which year? The year that is mentioned over here. Come. I have to look for the state in the state column. For which state? I'm looking for the state that is present in I3. And I'll simply close the bracket and hit enter. So right now, this is Florida 2013. And sum of sales over there is what you see here, 19,102. Let's change this. Let's make this um, California. OK. In that case, you can notice how the sum of sales has changed. The maximum sales has changed, minimum has changed, and also sum of sales has changed. Okay, now my requirement is to count. I just need to get the number of transactions or the number of records that are there, number of values in the sales column in the year that is specified here and for the state that is specified here. It's just the count number. All right. So how to write count if s on similar, yes, similar to the other ones. But if you see count if s directly, we specify the criteria range. Okay. For the rest of the functions, if we are trying to get the maximum value, we had to specify the column from where the maximum value is supposed to be fetched. While getting the minimum value, we had to specify the column from where the minimum value had to be fetched. We had the min range. Similarly for some, some range. But here we don't have count range because it's simply going to count. 
it does not matter what it counts, right? It's just going to count the transactions for the state mentioned and the year. So directly criteria range. So my first criteria is the year has to be um, looked up. This is the year that I want to look up here, comma. And the state has to be looked up over here. So it has to search for state in this column and the state being California. So it will look up for the state range I didn't give. It's going to look up for the year 2013 in this column. And it is going to look up for the state California in this column. It will look up and then it will count the number of rows that we have. Okay, number of transactions that we have, four. We have four transactions which have happened in the state of California in the year of 2013. Okay, now let's look at one other condition. We need to find the sum of sales in 2013 where the sales is greater than 10,000. So how to build a function for this? Okay, sum IFS. Sum ranges, I need the summation of the data in the sales column. So values that are present in this column are supposed to be summed up. That is my sum range. Criteria is year is supposed to be 2013, which means over here, I need to look for 2013. The next criteria is the sales value is supposed to be greater than 10,000. So again, I'll come back here. This is my range. Okay, in this range, you look for those where the sales value is greater than 10,000. So when we are hard coding the criteria, it has to be given in double quotes. Okay, it has to be given in double quotes. So the data in this sales column range is supposed to be greater than 10,000. Then only I will take and sum it up. So when I apply this and hit enter, so this is the summation. What did it sum up? It is summing up only those transactions where the sales is greater than 10,000 and for 2013 only. Here I have two more. Look at this number here, 80,045, which you can see here, right? 80,045, that is what we have. Wherever the sales is greater than 10,000 and the year is 2013, I got the summation of sales. Okay, let's look at one last example. Number of rows where the target is achieved. We have budget sales and we have the actual sales. Now I need to find out how many uh, particular transactions are there over here where the target has been reached. So this is the target sales. This is the actual sales. And we computed the difference between the two yesterday. Actual sales E2 minus the target sales D2. You can see the formula here, right? And uh, I had copied down that formula because it is relative referencing, it worked. Now I need to find out how many rows are there where the difference is greater than zero. Target is achieved, meaning the difference would be greater than zero. I'll, I'll like uh, for Espresso in California, actual sales is 17,000, budget sales is 15,000. So here we achieve the target. But if you look at, Espresso related to Colorado, actual sales is 4,000. Target that was given was 5,000. So we have actually ended up not meeting the target. So only where the target is reached, then how do we build a formula for this? I need to count if I have only one condition to check. I have only one condition to check. So just the range and the criteria count if is sufficient here. You don't have to use count IFS. Count IF, count if is enough. The range is this data in the difference column. And the what is my uh, prerequisite? What is my requirement or the criteria? The data in that field is supposed to be greater than zero. Greater than zero. Okay. Now, once I put this condition, it will count only those transactions where the difference is greater than zero. And we have 36. Okay, out of the total data, 36 are all uh, those transactions where the target has been met. Okay, Karthik, you're saying 49 cell, it is 2012. Yes, 
we have half half of our data is 2013 remaining half of our data is 2012 and we are looking up for the year here see we, we could mention any year suppose from 2012 i need the data i will mention it here so for 2012 for that state the uh, values got updated so if you go now and check 2012 two conditions we are giving year is one condition which could be either 2013 or 2012 okay and state is another condition therefore we have taken the whole thing okay so that was about max ifs min ifs sum ifs count ifs and simply count if i hope it is clear so it does not matter whatever is the condition you would like to specify you can specify whether something has to be equal to zero or something has to be less than zero or greater than zero is it positive is it negative it does not matter based on whatever condition is given to you accordingly you will build the formula accordingly you will set up the conditions but i hope you all understood the syntax and how to use it <laughs>